Hi, I'm Eric Pratt with US Broadcast. I'm today here with Marco Bronzante from Axel Technology. He's their CTO, so he, he knows a lot of technical things about how to make their oxygen consoles work. And he was showing me some really interesting stuff about how the consoles integrate with vMix, and I felt like it was something that we should maybe do a little video on. So we're going to go through the different ways of connecting the oxygen consoles to vMix via USB, Dante, how to control them through IP, and we will also uh, talk a little bit about how to have the controllers actually send out things like HTTP commands to PDZ cameras and things like vMix. So where should we start? Um, I suppose let's take a look at the, uh, the different IP methods of connecting uh, the consoles to vMix. So we're using your audio. Yes, hello everybody. This is my audio, which is connected to the Oxygen 3000 yep. in this case. And of course, through an analog cable into the microphone input. Uh, remember that we also have phantom power there uh, if you need to send uh, your 48 volts to your microphone. And then what we did is we just uh, got a printer cable, a USB printer cable, yep. and we connected the USB port from the Oxygen 3000 to the computer where vMix is installed. Yeah, and, and actually, what we're going to get, we have two USB ports, by the way, and they're bi-directional, so you can send audio from the console uh, to vMix, or you can also send audio from vMix to the console, and you get two ports like that. And so, in this case, if you want to show it, maybe we can go into the vMix inputs, and so we have an idea of what we have. Can you do that for yeah. me, Eric? Yeah, so what, what we have is we're bringing your audio into the Oxygen 3000 and then from the 3000 by USB to vMix. Now we have a lot of inputs here, which we'll get to in a second, but uh, the line feed from the Oxygen shows up as an input here, right. which I'm not going to select because we already have it right. as Marco's audio Correct. input. Correct. What's the other way that we can deal well, with? Well, if you have, let's say, the option for Dante installed on any of our Oxygen consoles. Like this one. Like that one. Um, then you can take advantage of audio over IP. And audio over IP is the future of audio, of course. Yeah. It's digital. It's low latency. It has a lot of quality. And we support Dante. Dante is one of the standards. Maybe the other one, which is other two, which are very famous, are Ravenna and Livewire. Yeah. Since they didn't talk to each other very well, what they did lately is they kind of, you know, uh, agreed on a standard, which is called AES67. Yeah. So Dante is AES67, and with this special protocol, it can also talk with the other guys. Let's say. Okay. okay. So that's kind of nice. And what we have here is actually we installed the Dante driver on the vMix machine, which is a software driver, it's called DVS, okay? And then with the Dante controller, which is a free application, what you can actually do is some cute routing directly on your IP network. And you can send any Dante device to any other Dante receiver, to Dante transmitter to yep. Dante receivers, correct? Yeah. So, so on the desktop here, we have the Dante controller showing the breakout of the Oxygen 2000 um, going to... Let's see, where, yeah, with a lot of pluses. It? Yeah. I think it should be over here, the plus. Okay, yeah, there you and go. here it is. Okay. So this is our desktop, uh, is our vMix system. So we have channels one and two mapped to channels one and two. And then that shows up again uh, in our... Uh, Audio inputs? Yep. Right. There. Okay. As a list of DVS receive channels. Oh, correct. So we've, we're bringing in the audio from the Oxygen 2000 uh, this way. Right. And remember, in the Oxygen 2000, the Dante option is quite large. It has uh, eight stereo inputs and eight stereo outputs. So it actually is an IP console, if you want. Yep. And uh, with the driver DVS, the Dante DVS drivers, you also get eight stereo inputs and eight stereo outputs. So you have a lot of possibilities of routing your audio in very high quality and low delay just using an RJ45 cable. Let's just give them a really quick rundown. We have three different consoles here. Yeah. Uh, the Oxygen 3000. Which is the, let's say, the grandfather of them all. Yes, we developed it around five years ago. The hardware hasn't changed, but the software has developed so much during these years mm -hmm. because we have developing more and more features into it. Essentially, it's a 10-fader uh, console. It has 
five microphone inputs, has eight stereo inputs as well, and of course one digital output, and it has the really, really nice feature which people appreciate a lot, has a telephone hybrid built in to take your calls, has a Bluetooth option so you can connect to your phone and simply you can take your IP calls with your favorite, you know, Skype or, or WhatsApp or other applications. and. Let's go to the 2000. Yep. The 2000 is the smaller uh, uh, mo uh, model, let's say. It has 12 faders, so it has two faders more. <laughs> but yeah, but really we call it smaller because it's more compact, it has less control buttons, but most of all, it does not have a display. So the lack of the display means that you cannot do the settings directly from the mixer, mm -hmm. but we give two new tools, which are very, very cool. It has a web GUI inside, a web server, so you can connect even with your phone yep. and just do all the settings that you need. But we also supplied you with a really cool application, which is our uh, uh, oxygen remoter. Can yeah. we show that? Sure. Oh yeah, with the L tab. Okay, so nope. sorry, let me wrong do one. It. Yeah, let me find it, or you can find yeah. it. Okay, there it is. Wow, yeah, full screen. That's really cool. So what is this? This is actually an application which allows you to remote control your oxygen from home, okay? Of course over IP. We, yeah, over IP, it's using an internet connection. Maybe you wanna connect in VPN, which is a little more secure, you wanna open your ports, but you know, in these times where people stay a lot at home, let's put it like that, and that's why we actually did it in a hurry, yeah. because it, you, you can actually can make your radio program or your production or your live production directly from home. And also from this application, we have the uh, setup button and we can add access all the settings of the Oxygen 2000 without the need of a display. Okay, okay. but there is a display. Okay. Uh, but... If we go over to this one, this is actually the oh, wow. HDMI output. Yeah, okay, you got it out. That's yeah. really nice. Well, yeah, okay. This is one of the, all three models have this. All three models have the HDMI output. And this is a tip, uh, something that only very big audio mixers have, expensive audio mixers have. This, I would say that our Oxygen series is the unexpensive range of products. They mm. go, it falls into that category. Yep. So it's accessible also for lower budget and let's say medium and small radio stations. So the, the, on the control panel, we get all the information that we need regarding the status. And uh, we have, uh, of course, input uh, meters, we have tally, we know which channels are open or not. We have some cute counters, we have the clock, which is something that's always very, very useful when you're going live. So that's a really, really cool option. And okay, let's, let's go on. So the other thing I wanted to show you, oh yeah, this is the web GUI, right? Yeah. Oh, so this is a web GUI. Let's try and monkey around and go in settings just to show that we're, all is there. And there's the menu. Oh, oh we gotta were, log in. Yeah, right. We had a timeout there. Root. Okay, there you are. So let's go setting, which is really nice. And it's coming up. Come on. There you have audio, which is nice. Inputs. And so you can see you have a lot of inputs. It's coming there. Let's go in some. Okay, some. Go back. This is software. Okay, back. Okay, let's go inputs, yeah, uh, mic microphones for example, and mic two. And as you see, we have a lot of things, compressors, oh, on the microphones. Uh, digital compressors, digital expanders with uh, parametric equalization. That's something important because in the analog world, you would have to buy external appliances to do that, to have yeah. a nice, you know, timbre of voice. Everybody wants the microphone to sound, the voice to sound very well. While in the digital domain, all this is in the DSP of the audio mixer. So you, it's all built in and you don't need to buy external equipment. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And the other thing I want to tell you, in, in the Oxygen 2000 and the 1000, we have less stereo inputs. Why? Uh, with only four stereo inputs, so it is a little smaller. But of course, if you put in the Danta options, you have eight, More. Ster right, eight stereo inputs, eight stereo outputs, and there are a bunch of converters on the market, and they're not expensive, so yep. you can add microphones, you can add digital inputs. Anywhere you on your network. Right, anywhere on your network. So yep. you don't even have to run ro long cables to get them to the console, yeah. and, and this is kind of an advantage also. That's the advantage of audio over IP, let's say. Okay? Yeah. I thought it was actually kind of cool um, the way that we downloaded the application was actually from the console because it's a web server and it has 
the remoter software that we were just talking about a moment ago. We got it off off of it as if it's like an FTP Im server. Imagine that the features, the functions to remote control to make the remoter work are REST APIs. It's a yep. special. And uh, by the way, they're available to anyone who want, anybody wants to control with their own software, they can do it. And there are more than 12,000 APIs in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we, we sometimes had issues with compatibility uh, between the firmware which is installed and the application. In this way, you never have uh, for, uh, remote the compatibility between the software because you're actually downloading the software version from the, the, yeah. from the console it, it knows what the right one is. Yeah, correct. Well, speaking of the REST API, we had a conversation or a question on the webinar yesterday, which kind of got the whole ball rolling on this, and this is sort of what, what kind of caused all this. So the idea that these can send HTTP commands, and for those of you that don't know what they are, it's basically just a command that you can type into your browser. And there's a lot of applications that can take these commands, like PTZ cameras and, and vMix. Um, I'm in fact, I'm using uh, the commands to actually run our, our little presentation here. So this is just sending HTTP commands off to vMix so that the what, what we want recorded on output two is, is, is being recorded. Um, but in this case, what we did is we have the Oxygen 2000 sending an HTTP command to the PDZ camera and to vMix. So I'm going to make sure that we can see both of these see things. That All right, okay. so give us slider one. Okay, slider one, I'm going to open the microphone one, yep. actually, and there it goes. Okay. And what should happen here? <laughs> uh, it didn't. <laughs> I don't know uh, because why. we have it open. Uh, let me see. No, no, no. That's not the issue. Uh, PGN. Let me do it again. No, because probably it's in the position number one. Let me go on number two. Yeah, okay. that's why. All right. It was already in position number two. So okay. let's start again. Let's start again. How do okay. we do that? I'm going to take it down. I'm yep. in position number two now. Yes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my fader, my microphone one, and the camera should move to position one. And there you okay. have it. So the fader just sent a command from the controller to the PTZ camera, and then it also sent a command to vMix to put it in program. Correct. Now, fader two. Let's go with fader two and open the other microphone, and here I am. So <laughs> it put input two in there, and you saw that the PTZ camera went to preset two. If this was a PTZ camera, it would have adjusted that as well, or whatever you want. We, there's. There's literally anything that you can do with a PTZ camera or anything that you can do with vMix or anything you can do with anything that has an HTTP API can be triggered by this, helping you really automate your studio. Correct. Let me say something about the start of the faders. This is kind of very typical for a broadcast console. In the past, it was done with the GPI, and all three consoles have GPI outputs. I think we have four ins and four outs, which are free, because the other, other ones are used by our talk boxes, okay? But in this case, since it's an IP console, what we did is we extended the possibilities to send these starts and stop commands, not only through the GPIs, but also through TCP IP commands in TCP IP, in UDP, but also in RESTful APIs. And that's the one we are using here with the PTZ and the vMix console. Okay. I mean, I think that's a, a good, concise explanation of how we can integrate these into our live production workflows. Um, obviously, if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to us at usbroadcast.co. Thanks for watching. Thank you.